In this tutorial, I want to briefly discuss how we can find key parameters for our measurements, uh, in particular, the measurement of central tendency and in a second part, the measurement of dispersion. So let's assume we've got a set of data here. Uh, I think it is nine data, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got nine data. Uh, this could be a measurement of, let's say, a biomarker in concentration units or whatever we want. And what we want to do in the first place is we want to give an idea of and a summary of the data. And instead of always talking about this data, we want to give a summary. And that is these measurements of central tendency and dispersion. So what I usually do is I would like to visualize the data on a, just a simple number line. And there is a neat trick that we can do in Excel if we want to uh, do exactly that. So we could, for example, in order to get a number line, what I do is I just simply add the number zero in a second column and then with the left mouse button clicked and you see this uh, black cross here in the right bottom corner of the cell. With the left mouse button clicked, I just simply drag down and I've got zeros now everywhere and I highlight both columns insert, go here to charts and do a scatter plot. And what I see here now is I get a nice number line. I don't need the numbers here. I don't need a chart title. And I've got my numbers nicely visualized. So I can uh, see very nicely what these numbers actually look like and they look pretty reasonable. Now, what I can do next is I can calculate the mean and just sort of as a revision, the mean of some observations. So the mean of some observations, we are talking about something called mu, that is the mean, and that is defined as basically adding up all the numbers, all the observations, and dividing by the count. So all observations added, added up, divided by the number of observations that we have. And mathematically, we would write this as the sum of all the observations, which we usually write as x sub i, divided by the number of observations. Uh, luckily, Excel has a nice function for that. So here is the mean or the average function. And all we need to do is really start typing mean and we get as a mean 26.322. Uh, the next one that we want to calculate is the median. And the median is the value that splits our observations in two halves of the same number. And what we can do is we can sort our data. And in order to do that, we highlight them and go to sort. And we can just simply say yes, sort. So we have got our data sorted from smallest to highest. And the median now is the value that splits our observations in two equal halves. So this would be four observations. So this would be four observations 
above the median or, or below in this case the median. So one, two, three, four observations like that and also four observations that are larger than the median and this here would be our median and Excel can uh, again do that very nicely with an equation so equals median we start typing and all we need to do is highlight the cells and indeed we get 26.2 as the median. The skewness tells us whether our data are sort of in any way uh, biased towards one end, towards, for example, uh, this end here, then uh, we would have a tail to the positive side, or if we of the data are more towards this end, if there are more day, if the higher values are towards the higher end, then we would have a left tail. And Excel can tell us about the skewness. So equals skew. We need to be careful. There are different skew calculations. We want a skew calculation with the ending P, which stands for this is our population. So here we do a skewness. And we get a skewness of 0 0.7. So this is a positive skewness. So we've got a positive skew. Positive skew. Which means our data are around this range but we have a tail and that's probably caused by this uh, data point here. We've got a tail here towards the positive side. So our data are not symmetrical. So they are not symmetrical. And that becomes important when we are looking at some uh, hypothesis testing. So this was the how we determine the measures of central tendencies. And also we get a little bit of information about how the data are shaped. Now let's have a look at the measure of dispersion. And that tells us basically how the data are spread out. And uh, one very easy uh, way of looking at that is we can calculate the range of the data. And this it would be just simply the uh, largest number minus the smallest number. So in this case, the largest number, that would be 52.1 minus the smallest number, 8.6. Uh, that would be 43.5. So this gives us an idea of how far the numbers are spread out. We can also calculate another uh, measure of dispersion, which is called the, the variance. And that is actually quite an interesting one because the variance, and uh, this would be abbreviated like this, so we are looking at the variance for our data and this is usually abbreviated with the sigma sign and we are looking at sigma squared that is the variance and what we do is we sum up the difference between each observation how far away this is from the mean that we just calculated. We square this number and we divide it by the whole number of observations. And if you wonder what this is all about, um, what the, the, the general idea is, we've got uh, a number of data Let's say we've got something like this. This might be our observations. 
and we have here we have our mean that is the mean of the data and what the variance does is it measures the difference between the individual observations and the means and on top of it it takes the square uh, so for example let's take this point here so we take the square of this point we take the square of this point so we do the squares we take the squares of all these points this one here is very small and we sum up the squares so we sum up the squares I indicate it like that that should be all the squares and then we calculate the average of the squares and we divide by n. That is a nice visualization how we can see what this variance actually looks like. So for each point that we have, so 8.6, we could start here with 8.6 minus the mean that we've just calculated, that would be 26.32. Squared plus and then the next value 14 and so on and so forth, and we would divide by our count of nine. Now, this is quite a tedious process, and uh, therefore we should make use of the built in function in Excel. So, equals variance and we've got two different variances if we just want to look at our data and describe the data we would use the variance for the population bar p which the equation is given here so we click on that and calculate this number here for the variance and that would be 132.83 now we note that this is sort of we calculated the square, but sometimes this is not very intuitive and useful. Sometimes we just want the differences uh, as such. And therefore we would take just simply for what is called the standard deviation. For the standard deviation. deviation we would say this is just simply the square root of the variance and that would be just simply sigma in this case and we would use exactly the same equation here we could easily take the square root of this value that we just calculated or we make use of the standard deviation uh, equation so equals standard def and we are also need to be careful there are two different ways of a standard deviation if we are just describing our data we want to go for standard def p we highlight the cells and we get a standard deviation of 11.5. So this is a nice measure of dispersion. We can also calculate a median of the absolute deviation from the median. Oh, what the hell is that? So what we are doing here with our example, we have calculated the difference between our data points and the mean but there is also another way how we can do the calculation let's say we've got our data here something like that and instead of taking let's do another one here instead of using um, the mean we can use the median of the data the midpoint 
that separates the data, and that's uh, probably uh, one. Uh, that's probably something like this one here. That might be the median of the data. Uh, the median is very often abbreviated as X with a sort of a squiggle on top. That's the median. And now we calculate the distance of each data point from this median. And we take the absolute value of this distance. So we don't care whether it's up or down, we just simply use the absolute value. And we can then add them all uh, and we can uh, find the numbers for each observation. So let's just simply do that here for our observations. So we calculate the absolute value, which is indicated by this. This is the absolute value. And what we do is we calculate the difference between the observation and the median of the data, that is 26.2. And I lock the cell so it doesn't change by pressing the F4 key. So this would give us the absolute difference between this data point and the median. And now I can do that for all the other cells here. And I get a number, uh, a series of numbers here. And now I can calculate the median of these numbers here. So I can calculate the median for these numbers that I just calculated. That should be an equal sign. So we calculate the median of these absolute differences. And we get as a sign of dispersion 4.4. .4. Luckily, Excel has also a function for that. And this is called MAD for, it's quite mad, median of the absolute deviation from the median. And again, it works pretty much like the other measures of dispersion. So we can put that in and hopefully get the same number. Yes, we got the same number. So this is also a measure of dispersion that we sometimes observe when we look at the literature. So in the first part, we've got the measures of central tendency, mean, median, skewness. Sometimes there is also you find a mode in it. The mode is the, uh, is the number that shows up most frequently. Very often you'll find that a data set doesn't have a mode if these are all unique numbers. So that's why I didn't discuss it here. We had a look at the skewness of the data, how skewed are the data. And we can also do a measure of dispersion, how this, how variable are the data. So we can calculate a range, a variance, a standard deviation, and also a median just simply from this data. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.